five or six months or a year or so. But I finally came up with it. But the interesting thing about this name is that uh, I, I uh, held a talk at uh, Asia BSB found about, about this, and I was collecting, uh, uh, like, I was doing like research on what, what other user space file systems are, are, are there out there, like that, so the way you first, you first do the work, and then you kind of fit prior work into, into that somehow. And then, then I came upon something which someone had written in 2003, something called POPS, which was the practical user land fake file system. Okay, now that's, that's certainly interesting. An interesting name for this one, but well, I didn't think it was worth to change the name. Make a name for anyone. Anyway. So, how is it different from Fuse? Well, I guess we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, the quick part, which you'll see on the left, next slide of uh, the architectural overview, is, is that uh, how does this work? Well, we have a BFS module within the kernel which uh, interfaces with the kernel's VFS layer. And uh, applications don't realize that they're using a user space file system. They're just using, using a file system like they would be in a file system. So uh, we interface with the kernel with a, with a kernel VFS framework, and then we, well, whatever the kernel has, we need to write open, no, I yeah, open, create, give you to rename, all the fun stuff. Whatever, uh, we, we somehow crunch into a format which we can transport to user space and uh, it's root, root to a device. And uh, we have this library called libpuffs in user space which handles most everything of what, what, you, what you need to do, provides really interfaces, whatever. And uh, then, specifically for, for this talk, on top of that, we have this refuse library which is the Fuse implementation in NetBSD, and uh, that interprets whatever libpuffs gives it and uh, trans transforms it to something that any Fuse file system you can find off the internet and download and compile and understand and work with them and so forth and so forth. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, so, so this is just uh, uh, Tell, tell some something about pops. Like uh, I, I don't think uh, well some some of these may be supported in Fuse, but I, I think they're they're uh, kind of unique to pops. So first of all, we have real file file handle support, which which means that uh, the kernel BFS module actually goes and asks the user land implementation that okay here we have this node. What's this node's file handle? So we can actually do a proper NFS. Of course, it depends on the file system backend, then if it, if it actually has a proper file handle. If it doesn't have, then it can fade it or, or decide to not support it or, or anything. But if you have that ability, you can have proper NFS export full file systems. Uh, then, once uh, kind of, I have this weird idea that I don't like threads. Well, that's actually not a weird idea. But I just don't happen to like threads. I don't like how they schedule behind my packets like they're plotting, plotting against me or something like that. So I figured out, well, why not do something where we can uh, schedule something explicitly. Uh, in file systems, that is, that's important, well, especially in the user lab case, for example, network file systems, you file off a query somewhere, you don't want to be waiting there until your, your, uh, your uh, response arrives. You, you want to be doing something, doing something useful at that time, like uh, getting more events from the kernel or, or you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, if every file system have, have to implement this kind of thing or explicitly save their state every time they want to send something, it's kind of, you know, annoying to program like you have you know, you need to save, save if, if effectively save stack state, save registers, and so forth. So uh, what I did was I did something. Well, actually, we talked earlier. If, if you were listening to the pipeline talk, we talked about coroutines. So those are effectively called coroutines. So every function gets past uh, what I call a continuation cookie, and uh, you can yield, yield on that cookie, and then you can continue from it later. So 
and explicitly schedule yourself wherever you want. It's kind of a the implementation is something you don't want to read if you want to remain sane. But I think the user interface is kind of uh, easy enough. Continue and so you can, if you want to apply systems to implement CMS pipes, you can do that. Uh, then built, built, on, built on that concept, I have a generic uh, buffer and event framework for network file systems. Uh, we'll, we'll see soon a couple, a couple of example file systems, I'll just go through quickly use that. So that basically abstracts all the memory management, all the buffer handling, uh, all the, you know, you send something when you received, how do you handle it in a, in a network file system. And others also. Ah, oh, yeah, actually, I should mention at this point that besides that, we're twice as good as anyone else, we actually wrote a paper. So all the details I, I won't bother going into, into now are available in the paper. You can get it in the conference proceedings or you can get it from the URL, which is in the paper. I <laughs> know. <laughs> and uh, also that contains the references to prior work I've done. For example, a uh, paper describing this. Uh, then we have suspension support. So uh, the kernel, kernel file system interface supports suspending a file system so you can take a snapshot of it. But, uh, well, that might be interesting, but this opens up plenty of other opportunities. For example, let's say you want to migrate your user space file system to, to another, another machine or, or something like that. You flush everything uh, from the kernel, you, you have it. Spend it, then you just, well, whatever you need to do for your file system, and then restart it again. We have inter integration with the kernel hash, so, uh, well, mainly the page hash. So you can flush the uh, pages, you can invalidate the dirty page, well, yeah, that has, as everyone probably understands, I mean, that's unsynchronized from the user space as some kind of race conditions which you need to handle, but anyway that's important, so you don't need to wait for the kernel to eventually do that. And also what you can get is notifications uh, when the kernel reads or writes a page which is in, in, in uh, as asynchronous notifications of when the kernel reads or writes a page which, in, which is in the page cache. So if you want to do caching in your user land file system, you can you can get notifications that now the kernel has modified this page and if, if how, 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 how can you handle the cache problems in user space? And uh, then this is, this is what I've recently done. That's actually, well, not useful if you're a user, but I think it's very cool if you're a developer. So you can say kernel file system code, compile it and mount it so that the kernel file system is running in user space. So for example, if you want to do some, well, I suppose most file systems now, so FFS development, for example, you on FFS a little and then you just run the program in user space and if you happen to mishack it a bit then then uh, uh, then all you get is a crash instead of a kernel panic. And you can do that for all, all kinds of other new tricks like you want to test some error paths in your file in your kernel file system go go do some uh, uh, fault injection there. It's it's completely isolated from the rest of the and uh, TMPFS is just mentioned specially because it took some special work to get work. A few example file systems we have in place. Uh, we don't have many, many file systems available for this interface. Most of the file systems are available for the Fuse interface because there's the 10 billion Linux guys who happen to write two of the day, so there's more file systems available there. But some of you do have it, uh, it's HFS. If you haven't used this HFS, I encourage you to try it. Uh, when I wrote, um, I wrote uh, the kind of package initial version of SSH that I wrote, I was like, wow, this is really useful stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's modeled after, after the Fuse, Fuse file system, but it, for example, uses continuations and uh, generic buffering or whatever I mentioned. Uh, then we have support for 9P. Well, that's just uh, what motivated me to do the generic element buffer thing because I saw that things, things between these two file systems, they shared a lot of 
And then there's also an implementation of portal file system, which is a uh, uh, the 4.4 BSD file system where you can uh, which which works so that you have portals in user space which open a file descriptor and then they pass it to the calling process. So you can have, for example, TCP sockets in your file system and, and things like things like that. And this just uh, adapts a lot of the pre-existing MOM portal code to the POPS interface. But what's surprising about this guy is, is that uh, it's very similar to these guys. So uh, it doesn't do file description passing. It, it, it is a real file system. But it really shares a lot of the characteristics of the distributed file system. And uh, then some system control stuff. And the last one is interesting. There's a file system layer which rips off all case, so it makes everything case insensitive. And uh, this is something that Alistair wrote, or, 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 or Alistair initially wrote a version for the Fuse file system, which, which did that, I think his motivation was something like uh, package source testing on uh, case insensitive file systems, something like that. But uh, then I thought, hmm, well I have all this neat uh, path name stuff in the POPS interface, which I can make use to make, make this uh, a lot simpler, simpler and so forth. So I wrote it and there's a comparison of these two in the paper. It's probably an interesting read. And then just a few words about the interface uh, before I uh, hand over to Alistair. So uh, it's very, very DFS-like. And uh, the point is that, well, it's really kind of hard to decide if you want to have an abstract user land interface, which means you need to translate everything which arrives, or on the other hand, if you want to have like a, a really kernel-like interface, which uh, where everything is mostly like in the kernel. And uh, what it happens? As it happens, POPS is very critical. So uh, I was initially worried about that, but then Alistair came along with Fuse, and then I kind of, I've, I've kind of started thinking that hmm, maybe I, because I'm more interested in the research aspect, so maybe I'll just investigate those a bit more, gain the few years more experience, and then see where that leads. And meanwhile, I don't need to worry about the interface stability. People want to use user land file systems on NetBSD with a stable interface, they can always use user of user implementation. So, thank you. Ah, um, how might Arla fit into this? Yeah. So, if you could implement Arla on top of it. Sorry? If you could uh, yeah, the question is how, how might Arla fit into this? And uh, the answer is you could implement Arla on top of it. Top, but it's so, not providing infrastructure that offers it. Yeah, kind of. Well, that's another different user land file system. And uh, but it, for example, doesn't provide a library interface. So it just, as I understand, provides just the raw device, which is quite more difficult to implement and so forth. Okay. So I think let's move on. It's, uh, Quite rare for a double act to have the straight guys to warm up, but let's move on to this. Um, this is the, the structure of my part of the, the talk. We're going to be talking about what refuse is, uh, and the type of next refuse. Um, some compatibility with Fuse, uh, some of the issues there. Talk about some licensing as well. Um, uh, the development strategy that we use to, uh, to make this work. Um, some of the implementations that we have in package source and some of the hoops that we have to jump through to make it work both on FSD and on all the other uh, operating systems that package source supports. We've got some performance figures, very, very rough, but um, it gives an interesting uh, view on themes and I'll also touch on some future work as well. Um, my motivation for this actually wasn't what Antti said. Um, he talked about his, um, his work on puffs, and I, I was very interested, and I asked him about the relationship with views. At the time, I, uh, he gave me an answer, and I thought, great, yeah, fine, go away. And then at the land last year, Kirk asked me exactly the same question, but a few months had elapsed by that time, and I'd completely forgotten the answer that Andy said. And so I thought, I better get something implemented straight away, or I'm going to sound absolutely stupid. So that was the motivation for refuse. Uh, 
Moving on. Um, yeah, Re refuse to live with pain. Refuse, I, I don't know how we how should call it, um, but we'll move on. This is what Fuse looks like, and uh, Anthony had uh, an interesting um, slide around there about, um, about what uh, Puffs does. Very much the same kind of uh, idea here. We've got the, the loop into the kernel, uh, going, going down to the BFS, up to the Fuse uh, device, and up into the, the callbacks up in the user end. And this is what Refuse looks like. Mm -hmm. that? Enough geek humor there. Uh, I said enough geek humor. Um, got to look at the compatibility here. And, and um, some of the source code compat. I apologize if you can't read these, but I, I had absolutely had to show people these slides. These, these are great. These are if, um, if people are thinking of getting married and things like that, um, when not to hyphenate the names. I don't know if you can see that one there, and it says best lay. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, while, while these are on, I'll talk about the source code, code compatibility issues. We have a user land file called fuse.h, which is included um, with everything. And the structures are, are the same as that we have in fuse, so that we're, we're laying uh, refuse on top of buffs and creating uh, an interface that looks exactly like fuse. Um, we have a shared object, or a library called librefuse. Uh, .so or whatever, um, and all of the Fuse functionality is built into that. You just link with that, uh, and Package Source has the necessary smarts to do that kind of thing. You can have that on other platforms as well. Um, so it's the, the Package Source has the smarts for the other platforms too. Um, Fuse itself has different interface versions, um, and they're labeled very, very confusing. They start off at 2.2, I think, and go through now to 2.7. Uh, although the one that's mainly used is 2.6. And there's absolutely no relation to Linux kernel numbers or anything like that. But you'll often see, uh, see things Fuse use version 2.6. You put a definition in your code beforehand for the version you want to use, and you get that interface. Let's move on to the next one. Um, backwards compatibility is also an issue with this. We can go back to 2.2, although there are, there are some file systems out there that still use this, this, uh, this old one. There's some old um, Fuse uh, callbacks, one, one Skitter, I think it's called. And, uh, if you can't read that one, trailer hooker that one is. <laughs> There's more talk in, in, the, um, in the paper on, on the compatibility things. Uh, uh, you see that one all right? Yeah. That's poor sap. There's more talk in the paper that we have on compatibility and compatibility issues. Uh, and there's also some language bindings as well. I'm going to go on through this. Any better? Looney Ward. Right, the language bindings that we have, there's obviously the C and the C++ language bindings that we have for everything that comes straight with, with reviews. Um, there's also Python language bindings, bindings which are in package source at the moment, if you want to see that. And everybody got that one? Okay, let's move on. Uh, there's, there are parallel bindings too. Um, and uh, they're, they're not in package source at the moment because it won't pass the, um, the regression test. And the reason for that is it, it requires look back file systems and regression tests. And I haven't had time yet to, uh, to get the, the Linuxisms out of that. Um, there's also um, mono or C sharp bindings. And um, also some, any, any Haskell programmers out there? There's some Haskell bindings for it too. Right. Moving swiftly on. Um, right, we'll get to it soon. Uh, my favourite is right at the end. That one. That was hardy hard, you can get it. Um, licensing. Um, obligatory uh, chance to put up a, a picture there of Paris Hilton. And uh, the licensing problems were that uh, she didn't have a license to go out driving. She was already uh, disqualified. That was her reason for a time in jail. Um, the licensing that we have are free BSD. Uh, it has, um, has got their own version of, of uh, Fuse, but that's written under a BSD license. The Open Solaris one uh, is written under the CBDL, which isn't surprising. Um, some people have problem 
problems with the CDDL. Um, it's certainly uh, more restricted than an ordinary BSD license, but not that much more. Um, Mac Fuse is written under the three clause BSD license, mainly because it's derived from the, the free BSD ones. And uh, Refuse, of course, under a three clause BSD license. I don't know if you can recognize some of the, uh, the players there. There we go, that's Richard Stallman. This is the launch of the GBLV3 license. I thought I'd put this up because it's rather opposite, I thought. Sitting behind him is Aidan Logan, and uh, that's the mass ranks of penguins there. But unfortunately, the license has a problem with creeping up behind you and getting you in the back sides. So, moving on. Also within uh, Refuse, um, we keep our, uh, I noticed the, the file systems that we, that we build up, they, they have uh, file path names attached to them. Um, this is fine for, for ordinary file systems um, that have the, the file paths hard coded within them, except for the very early versions of FFS, obviously. Moving on swiftly. Um, for virtual file systems, you don't have that kind of thing. You need to have a way of squirreling away the path name later so you can get back to it later. You can do um, uh, directory operations on them, things like that. So I've got a, uh, a set of routines in the uh, base source called uh, virtual directory. Basically what they do here, one's up at the top, manipulate the, um, the directory uh, file system that we have. So you can add files to it, delete from it, um, find them, find them on, based on various criteria. And there's some, some routines here which uh, traverse directories. Um, make it nice and easy. They're, they're uh, intentionally meant to be like the, um, the library routines that we have for um, right, we now move on to some things. There are, there are two levels uh, within Fuse. One is the bottom of the low level, and one is at the top level. And I apologize for this animated GIF here. Um, I, went, I was trying to show the karate and the, the multiple levels of um, pipe belts and dams and sensei you can have. It looks like this bloke is doing the, uh, the can can or something like that. Um, I blame Google. Their image sort of found that one for me. Right, this is a, a, another one, the um, dual level train platform. Um, I think, as, uh, as one of the older ones here, I can remember a day when there were system programmers, programmers and application programmers, and they tended to work at different levels. Um, system programmers worked out at the bottom, they were pretty interested in the nuts and bolts and didn't work in time slices more than what two microseconds, something like that. Um, application programmers, much more interested in the, uh, the overview, uh, the nice, uh, nice rounded um, uh, interfaces that they were, they, were not, they were used to using from libraries and things like that. That's uh, some high-level grainy work. And that's a high-level system. And that's some low-level dumping grounds. Um, in some continent over to the, the left of this room. Um, this is some uh, full level work in Iraq. And that's a low level system this time, all, all in the theme of refuse. And um, some low level lighting there. Okay, I'll go on now and explain a bit about package source and the packages that we have in there. Um, hopefully, you can all see that. Um, and I could read that, read them all out, and uh, give you an exhaustive, uh, an exhaustive uh, in and out of, of what they all do. I would, however, encourage you to look at them and um, see for yourselves. See if there's anything you need there. Um, see if there's anything that um, that you find interesting, and maybe you can add on or do better or something like that. Um, there's a couple of times that we've heard the NTFS 3G mentioned it's there. Uh, that provides read write support for NTFS volumes. Uh, very, very useful. And that's also one that we do some performance benchmarking on later on in, this, this, uh, in the paper. And I'll speak briefly about it later on. Another interesting one up there, Fuse Pod. I'll show you a slide of that later on. That allows you to access and manage the tunes in your iPod based on a file system um, that's, that's attached to it, typically from a laptop or something with USB or firmware attachment. Um, Gmail FS, interesting one in that you can use Gmail to provide 
support for you, uh, support, um, found, found some space for you, so storage for you. Um, and that's going to give you a way to 27 gig at the moment for free. Then you've got, when you've got an internet connection, you've got 2.7 gig you can get to. Uh, and remember, of course, that you can always invite yourself to a different, uh, different email address. Um, and you have up to 100 of these organizations too. So you can get a fair amount of storage on the internet if you, uh, if you go around looking for it. Um, Curl FTPFS is a nice one as well. It allows the um, basically the contents of FTP and HTTP space to appear as a local um, file system. Um, and it's basically on top of curl. Um, I didn't particularly like the interface that we have there, so I've, I've written something else and I'll talk about that later on. So. Okay, so that's the uh, that's one of the instances of the iPod FS. <laughs> right. Antti was talking earlier on about um, just control FS. That's um, the, that's what it looks like in, in operation. Actually, you uh, see the, the system control nodes down there, and you can change into the directories, you can manipulate those. This is based on paths, it's not based on, on directories. Um, and that's what Hansi was talking about for the um, SSHFS, another uh, interesting application. And as he says, very, very useful. Uh, and you do quite a lot. Um, there's some talk earlier on about ZFS. Um, running on Fuse. Um, the Lions guys are, are in, quite interested in doing this. Um, they actually have a, it's up to the stage where they can read and write, although they have, um, they have problems at the moment. One of the interesting pieces of this email here is the, if you count the number of uh, threads that ZFS Fuse is running, it's 154. Uh, the previous version, 113. Um, so performance isn't going to be good for you, but this is one of the reasons as well for, for my implementation of Refuse. Refuse, uh, sorry, ZFS Fuse uses the low-level interface, which we haven't finished off within uh, the yet, yet, um, but it will be coming at once. Um, as an aside on, on ZFS or CFS, if you come from somewhere else, um, we had a look at it at work and um, actually did some comparison benchmarks between uh, Sun 6900 and the 25K. Um, and um, on both of those, the, um, actually moving to the 25K and using Solaris 10 and ZFS, uh, 6900 was running Veritas, uh, volume manager and file system, and there was 100 times slowdown moving to ZFS. So the, uh, the data integrity of REST has, does pay some prices. Um, the other problem that we had with it was that we found it un unstable. Uh, so uh, we were trying to, um, for DR purposes, we were trying to restore a 25 terabyte database for a data warehouse on this 25K. We got through 23 terabytes of it and then ZFS decided to die. Um, we actually went and asked our Sun support people, and I apologize for any Sun people here that you can come and talk to me about it later on. We have asked our, uh, our Sun sales representative who had it running in production at the moment, and they couldn't tell us of any customers who are doing that. So be aware about ZFS, it's, it's got some excellent potential, it really does. And I'm not trying to knock it or anything like that, but I'm just saying that that might not be the time to uh, the toy best data at the moment. Okay, this is some of the stuff I'm hacking on as well. Uh, apologies about this, but uh, this is just a, 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 local, um, uh, a local readout of, of some of the file systems that, that we have here. Um, and they should be making it into package stores or into the NetBSD store sometime fairly soon. We've got some of them there already in RCFS that Andy talked about. And my motivation for that is actually um, for web servers. I get fed up of typing in URLs into Firefox and then telling me that file was not found because it contained upper left there's a uppercase or lowercase. I wanted something that was um, read only and I could just type in the thing and not worry about whether the caps lock was on or whether my children would be around and playing like that. Um, so that was the reason for ICFS. And yeah, I would encourage you to have a look at the paper and see the comparison that uh, will be written up on that one. Um, yeah, there are a few, few there that um, don't really worry about me. Uh, else. Some of them I'm going to throw away, like TNF, TPFS. Um, I asked Luke Newburn about that, and he said, um, no, it's not interesting.
too many kind of like reactive uh, TNS to be pushed to the FTP client and we all know and love. Right. Um, so that's that's the, uh, the work in progress as well. Let's move on to performance now. And uh, enough of the amateurs, let's go into the professionals here. There's uh, um, somebody close to me driving this around the uh, race track last year. Great fun. If ever you get a chance to do it, do it. Um, so, Dubai. 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 Mm -hmm. well, this isn't bad for the uh, anyway. um, So, what we think of file system in user land if we're concerned about performance? And the answer is we're not. We're really looking at uh, some of the interesting features we can get out of it. And as Anthony mentioned earlier, it's a marvelous vehicle for debugging, for trying things out. Uh, and also, if you want to migrate stuff, there's, there's a whole lot of things you can do. And Using a file system in Newfoundland does, does bring home to you the, um, the, the, just the possibilities that we have. Um, there are some things that people do well, and some things that people just, well, do they do you know, fairly badly. Uh, um, right. Uh, I'll also talk about some of the, uh, the differences that, that we have between uh, puffs and views. Um, Fuse uses a stat buffer for the um, for the node. Uh, Fuse is very much user level orientated. So you have somebody coming along, they want to make a, a file system out of some of the user line code that they have. Um, Fuse is excellent for that. It's written at exactly the right level for that and everything. thing. Um, for the more serious ones, just that you want to look at the low level um, stuff that's implemented. Um, Fuse returns errors, so there's negative integers and ESD and some positive integers. So we have a shim layer in there to, uh, to change all the negative error and certain goes into positive ones. So the fuse can then do its work in the right way. That's so the pass can do its work in the right way. Um, pass gives us access to the call contents and fuse you actually have to call some to get to out of thread level storage. Um, we don't have thread level storage and then gives the alone, so uh, we get all the information from the uh, pass call contents. And no matter what you do, somebody's going to do a different thing on top of it. Um, directory reads in fuse and in puffs are done in a different way. The buffering is done completely differently. Um, right. Um, I did talk about some of the, the um, fossils that are up there. So I'm going to start Okay, the development technique. Um, we didn't go all out at it. We thought, We'll try one nice, easy uh, system call, and Nancy kindly pointed out that lookup would probably be, very, be a very, very good one to do. Um, and then we built on top of that, we'll not one at a time, and so we get the, uh, the whole of refuse working. Um, and we, we have that right now, I think, with the, the section of the extended attributes, but uh, I'm sure that's coming. Um, people that have written a few file systems to, the, to lay down extended attributes on top of any file systems. It's, uh, um, so, pivot my golf cart again, this, this kind of stuff, um, there's all the development techniques that we use. Um, the, um, the, the paper points out that um, the refuse way of doing it is that we have typically one thread. So we're less parallel, but it doesn't mean to say that we have wrong results with the, uh, the file system. Okay, um, another one, a close up of that one, and that's somebody getting it wrong. The idea again is once, you can, once you've got these land file systems and try it over and over and over again, it doesn't matter if you have a crash or anything like that, you're not picking up bits off the file system, typically you've got snapshots of it, uh, and you're not worried about um, kernel stability or anything like that. Performance figures. Um, I must note that these are very, very rough. However, uh, Andy did these uh, with Q, uh, Q, yeah, we're running on uh, his laptop there. Um, the top figures are coming from uh, an NPSP system, and the bottom ones are coming from the 
links, which is an obvious one, uh, running on a, uh, a live CD. Um, this probably looks a bit better uh, what we see. Um, character, we have um, Fuse, yeah, more than that. Again, these are rough, so I don't think it was possible, but uh, what I would like to stress is that the, uh, the graphs are, are roughly the same, especially in that one. Um, in some things, we're, we're finding FBSD had performing views. I'll take it again if that's all right. Um, and then this one, as well as the seeks. So they're, they're roughly in the same ballpark, um, which I was quite surprised at. I didn't expect such, uh, such fast performance, actually. Right. You'd be glad to know that this is the top, finally over, and uh, we're about to go out, I think. Um, this is a picture of a Secret Service agent who was taking a nasty question indirectly to the President. Any questions? Go ahead. Uh, the character of Woodward, did you actually verify that the uh, cousins didn't do different things in the DFS layer, so that the actual file system gets uh, called uh, the same number of times? You know what no, I mean? No, that was just running my you know, stupid, stupid stuff. That was mainly the, uh, well, the purpose is it, it gets buffered in the kernel, so I didn't turn on all the hashes off because I didn't really want to measure that. I wanted to measure the user experience. So uh, it's actually when it's doing it, or when, when the writes are going to the file system, they come with the kernel hash, which is buffered into large chunks. Yeah, well, the question is, uh, is it different actual, actually the kernel doing different things to handle uh, character input, or uh, is it just uh, some uh, performance overhead somewhere else in the uh, interface layer? Yeah, like well, it might, might be, for example, from a system call or, or well, like like Alistair uh, said, these are just really rough figures, and, and one of the points is just to show that e even though we're not emulating kind of a diffuse interface in the kernel where it would be most efficient, it's it's still plenty efficient to emulate the user space because you're really anyway with the context which is an all of data mining you need to do in user space is not really really that relevant. Well, on a performance note, could, uh, without having read the paper, can you just give us a very quick um, comparison between user space FFS and real FFS? Oh, that sounds good. Well, it's, uh, it's a bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about 15% slower, so. but that's it. Pretty good. Sorry, another question. How about reporting to previous? Um, I don't <laughs> the previous thing, guys. Um, I don't see any problems with it. The interaction with the final layers, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, got for a crash or something like that, maybe. But it, sh it certainly should be portable. I'd mm -hmm. love to see it if the guys want to. Hello. What's this uh, Google search FS? Oh, right. Yeah. Google published uh, an HTTP interface. Right? And so you can actually um, program it up. So what, what I have there is um, a file system that if you if you want to search on the term uh, classical rangers or something like that, you would put in um, a file name, a path name of classical plus rangers. Um, send that off to Google if you can do it all the news of that. And just interpret the HTML and get back. Um, one of the things you have to do is you have to pretend to be links. I mean, otherwise, it starts to use different things with it. It thinks you're in, uh, on a funny browser. So it really, it really is a very yeah, 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 that's right. But uh, it, it, you send the query over. Sorry, the um, reference system sends the query off up to Google and interprets the results to come back. As files. Uh, as files as, as whatever. Yeah. As long as you've got the um, the HTTP. Uh, in there. It's, it's difficult to know how, how best to present this information, whether you want to present it as separate files because then you have to cast each of the files. Um, when you look at uh, the results of Google search on the browser, you get uh, the context in the paragraph, you get cached, uh, cached instances of it, you get the URL there as well. It's all clickable and things like that. 
that, that was one of the problems I had actually, is, is displaying the information you get back, how best to do that. And you could display it as a, as a huge symbolic link. Um, preferably not, right? Because there, there are other things involved in that. But the use line tools don't really care, they just interpret the stuff that comes back from the kernel as that. The reason I say perfectly not for that, because you're probably going to run into 256 character lengths on a symbolic link. Um, and uh, you know, get truncated search information, which isn't that great. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, it isn't dual power machine. <laughs>